Okay, so now that we have this far, uh, what we're going to be doing... Oops. Love that. We're going to be working on this bone right here. How do we get that to flow around so that the eye actually sits into this orbital sock and then this actual bone right here sits on the other bone as far as the form goes? How do we do that? Well, it's a case of actually putting in topology by taking out topology. So it's a good example. Example here, if I insert an edge loop here, it's going to be interrupting the eye. Okay, And if you can see here, there's a ridge that goes around the eye. Well, with this example, I could never get that ridge to go around the eye just perfectly and still attach back to right here. So that's what I mean. We're going to take an insert topology by wiping out topology, namely these faces right here. Okay, then I'm just going to move these down. But where am I going to attach these to? I mean, really, there's nothing in this area to attach to. Well, there's a few things we have to develop on the other side of the skull here. And to do that, I want to move or uh, just hide out my bottom jaw. One, there's going to be a hole here. Okay, so that way I have something to flow into anyway. So, I'm going to do an inset extrude here. Just like that. And then I'll just scale that a little bit more. And then I'm going to wipe out those faces. Wipe out these faces leaving a hole. Okay, then I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit because I, I broke my midline. So I'm going to put that back. Just like that. All right, now with that in place, um, now I can flow things right into that. Uh, again, uh, well, I'll put that edge loop in here in a little bit, but there is a, another edge loop I need to put in. But check this out. Now I can put that edge loop in, and it flows into the hole rather than go all the way around the mesh. So at least we're created with the idea that uh, we have a natural edge loop in that area. <laughs> There we go. All right, now I can just go in here and grab edges, grab an edge, grab an edge, and hit F. And there we go. We got this nice nifty ability to have it flow around the eye and now back around. And now I could put that edge loop back in that I need to go around the eye. So here's what I'm talking about there. So this now becomes up here. That there. This becomes there. This becomes right here and here. And then I 
I now have the ability to separate that bone. So, let's put back the eye because we still want that edge loop. Another inset extrude. Very handy, uh, very handy add-on. I don't even know what I would do without that. So now you can see we have this ability to go all the way around. It still has a good structure for this. Now I could probably put this in via sculpt if I wanted to. But I'm kind of looking at it as, you know, uh, a good lesson learned on where where this might attach. So I'm looking at the attachment here and I'm looking at the attachment right here. I'm also looking at the attachment right here. So that's how I picked out this series of polygons. Inset extrude. Now there's a way to inset extrude, hold on. There's a way to run this. I just can't remember how to do that. It's, uh... Ah, there we go. Okay, so let me explain this. When I use inset extrude, I can inset it by just dragging the mouse over, clicking the left mouse button, and then pull up on the mouse will allow you to do this. Ah, pretty amazing, huh? So not only can you get it around, but then you can bring it off the mesh a little bit too. Perfect. Now what I want to do is set these back a little bit further. Um, it's going to have a distinguish right here and right here, but right here it starts going back into the mesh and flatten. So, unfortunately, there's no one half way to do this, so I'm going to just have to pull these back. Perfect. And now we can start matching those up in the other side view. And it's getting a little tricky now because you have a lot more topology in the way. So it's going to be a lot of going in here, going three, and developing where that's going to be. So that one goes there. This next one in line goes here. So toggling between wireframe and solid is very important at this stage because if you do not, you could grab the wrong thing. And you know that you have it down is the fact that these will start flowing around really naturally. And don't get these skewed out like this or this. You know, make sure your flow of topology goes rather well around it. I'm just going to pull these back. I'm going to pull these back. I 
and how do I know how far back? Well, I'm using my artistic eye here. I'm not using the image planes. I've done this enough, but um, yeah, I know that bone comes just out there. And you can see how it tucks in. Okay, and that's what I've developed here is the ability to tuck in. That also means that this bottom jaw right here let's go into wireframe now you can see how much I have to put this in these two points actually have to go right here Okay. now it's going to be hard without you know really destroying the mesh I'm going to like that. put those two down. Then I'm going to jump, get these two, put those in, grab these two, put these into the center mid, then jump into wire f or solid and just kind of tidy up some situations. See, now you can see what what all the hubbub is about nice all right well at the bottom of here um we have the ability to it has this the teeth area is concaved in this area and there is some technical noise back here we're not going to get into the noise topology or anything like that but what I want to do is develop an internal ed edge loop right in this area to support the change so I'm going to straighten these out just a little bit more so the flow is nice and just how I developed that hole on the other side this time I'm not developing a hole, I'm just fixing up the topology so I can go in here and make a little bit of a cleft in there. So here we go. Inset extrude. Just like that. And unfortunately, what happens here is I have two extra faces, or well, actually three extra faces here. Four extra faces. And if I get rid of these faces, you see what happens. I got now this gap. But what I want to do is move this gap back. It's got to figure out which one needs to be moved. So now I'm just kind of sewing this up. And this is what happens when you're using the mirror modifier. Good. So what happens there? Well, I have this technical edge loop that goes all the way around on the interior of it. And that will help me when I'm doing this. Now, before I do this next step, I think I'm going to stop and go into the next video.